Peter R. Bregan, M.D., is called the conscience of psychiatry for his many decades of successful reform efforts. His scientific and educational work provide the foundation for modern criticism of drugs and ECT and lead the way in promoting more caring and effective therapies. His books include Talking Back to Prozac, Toxic Psychiatry, Medication Madness, Psychiatric Drug Withdrawal, and now Guilt, Shame, and Anxiety, Understanding and Overcoming Negative Emotions. Welcome to the Dr. Peter Bregan Hour. Hello, 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 my wonderful audience. By golly, here I am again in front of my big, big glass. It's probably about a th- half the wall and looking out at the birds. Right now I have a male goldfinch, still thinks he's in breeding season. He's looking very beautiful, like a canary only. I don't have him caged. He's sitting out on one of the three feeders outside my window. It's a beautiful day here in upstate New York. Not too hot, not too cold. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. And always remember that it's your interior. It's our spirit. It's our soul. That more than anything, more than anything, my wonderful audience, allows us to have good days. And I believe more today at age 83 than I even believed when I was an adolescent that love is what matters. Love for people, love for goldfinches, love for work, love for God, love for your ideals, just whatever engages you, gardening, farming, housekeeping, building a skyscraper, maybe like our, really, it's going to be interesting guest today, Beatrice Birch. Are you there, Beatrice? Peter. Hi. Maybe what really will make your life will be creating a whole new approach to providing a place where people can grow and find themselves and be themselves, and take charge of their own lives. So it's a glorious day here. I'm in good spirits. My wife's in good spirits. We're in good health. We want to thank all of you who care for us. And just tell you, things are really good. I have a new blog up. on. Um, you can find it through my frequent alerts. It's one of the more important things you could do in relation to a Our work would be to, you know, sign up for the free frequent alert comes to you automatically whenever I write one and uh, get those. Now, this actually has nothing to do with the frequent alert because I haven't put it on the frequent alert yet, which is I I have a new uh, blog up about SPAC. And you know what SPAC is. What is SPAC all about? SPAC is Stop the Psychiatric Abuse of Children. And what has inspired us to start SPAC is the discovery that the latest thing coming out of the FDA's devices division was putting electrodes on the foreheads of little children or anyone they want, because they've actually approved this device. So then prescribers can do it to anybody for anything. Uh, The only thing to get in their way would be malpractice or bad reputation. Once the FDA approves something, that's key here. Your prescribers are not controlled by it. So the FDA has approved putting electrodes on the heads of kids every night of the week to influence their brains to help their ADHD. Well, of course, ADHD isn't something that needs help. Usually all the help that's needed is uh, better circumstances and a better school. Sometimes the help that's needed is discipline from parents who don't know how to discipline or they get scared and then they don't know how to be loving and disciplined at the same time. But uh, kids who are very active or inattentive, whatever, they just... 
usually amazing kids. So it's not a disease, it's not a disorder, and yet we're going to change their brain waves. This thing affects your whole brain. And once it gets started with children, I believe it could become practically a fad. We could have millions of our kids accepting this, getting them ready for mind control, because this is mind control. This is outright, flat out mind control. Thus far, all mind control flattens you, makes you more docile, makes you more obedient. We haven't got any more sophisticated than that. This is the beginning of getting the whole population to submit to having their brains directly affected in a routine way. It's just horrible. It's just a terrible thing. And um, my guest, Michael Cornwall, that you've seen a few times today, it's Beatrice Birch, but he's been on lately and he's a wonderful psychologist in the West Coast. He's a co-author of this uh, and he's the director of SPAC. And he's the co-author of this new, brand new, this week, blog on Mad in America. Um, and I'll put out a blog about it, too. I want to thank um, just a, a, a whole bunch of, of wonderful uh, guests who have written me. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, Jan, Maureen, Vera, separately for just giving me encouragement. I asked folks to write in and tell me what do you think about my talking about politics that you may find offensive. And, um, you know, and uh, the answers I've gotten so far is, uh, you know, I'm on your side, a couple of folks, and and it's refreshing from, from Vera. <laughs> so... Um, uh, Write to me some more. Let me hear for some. I, I still think that most of my audience uh, has trouble with my politics of, of being more conservative, libertarian conservative. So I'd like to hear from some of you who find it difficult to listen to that part of the show when I devote two or three minutes at the most to it ever so far. And, uh, and let me know how you feel about it. Don't be mean. I actually, you know, I, I do, you know, I may be look big and powerful and successful, whatever, but don't be mean to me. Just be sweet and let me know uh, what is it like for you to deal with me being, what, what to call myself, um, God-fearing, somewhat conservative human being. <laughs> let me know. Let's have a kind dialogue uh, by email. And if you want to call in, I'm moving in this direction more and more of talking about it. America needs decent talk about these things. And one of you wrote in and said, you love the fact that Jeffrey Mason and I could have a talk about Donald Trump, whom I support. Write me about your feelings about that in a kind way or your thoughts. Get beyond feelings and write about thoughts. Reason with me. And Jeffrey is very much to the left. So it was interesting. And he's an old, old friend. God bless him. He's a, he's a dear man. Now, again, I got a, uh, when somebody asking about, you know, glutamate or glutamide or gluta whatever. Folks, good health is not about supplements unless you have, you know, you need, you need B vitamins because you're, um, like me, mostly eating vegetables. Um, supplements are not the answer to anything we call psychiatric disorders. Good health is good health, good health, moderate exercise, moderate exercise, plant-based diet with no dairy, no dairy and, and avoid the bad fats. There's a lot of disagreement about the good and the bad fats. I do get calls about, um, you know, can patients, people see me as a patient. More and more now, um, our insurances limit us to, to treating people, even on the phone, only from the state where we have an active medical license. My active medical license is in New York State. 
So I can't even consider doing a consult with you from outside New York State. And I don't generally do long-distance consults. I keep it local. But I'm willing occasionally to do one. But you got to be in New York State. So, uh, you know, um, and the best way probably to get in touch with me, if you're interested in that, since I don't give away my cell phone on the air, would be to uh, use our our direct uh, email for people who listen to the show. That's the only way you can learn about it. And that's Bregan Live. Bregan Live, one word, Bregan Live at hotmail.com. And I, and I love hearing from folks. And um, Maureen asked me about whether she could be having a, a withdrawal psychosis, getting, getting paranoid when she t- stops her Risperdal. And the answer is absolutely you could be having one. There's no way to know what you're having. But if when you stop a medication, antipsychotic like Risperdal, and you immediately start to change and feel that you're hearing voices or seeing things and, uh, or very, very calm and you know, feeling suspicious and paranoid, the odds are that this is uh, a withdrawal psychosis. And I can't do medical advice on the air because it's, every person is so different. And I, and I don't get to talk with any of you um, unless you do a consult from New York State, which, is, as you know, I've never even mentioned before that I can do. Um, so you, you, need, you need to find somebody else to talk with about this. Or read Psychiatric Drug Withdrawal, my book. It tells you all about that kind of stuff. Well, I'm chatting on here a little bit more than usual. Not a good thing because I really want to uh, get Beatrice Birch uh, talking to us on the the Dr. Peter Bregan Hour, by the way, on August 21st, 2019. If you're listening on August 21st, 2019 and only... You can call in and ask a question. Talk to me, talk to us, but about the show, about these themes, 888-874-4888, 888-874-4888. Otherwise, of course, and you all, you do this so beautifully, wait till the last show of the month on Wednesday at 4 p.m. New York time and call in on the open mic day. And um, we've been having very, very good open mic days so that's everything for now or mostly everything uh bless my wonderful audience be grateful for life and you can't be crazy be grateful for life and in an instant you will suddenly feel in a better spiritual space space i'll bet my guest agrees with us beatrice bird she's the founder of inner fire Inner Fire is in New England, and I'm going to let her tell you about it, but I'll, I'll read you the, um, the statement. The mission statement is very short. Inner Fire is a proactive healing community offering a choice for adults to recover from debilitating and traumatic life challenges without the use of psychotropic medications. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that perfect? That that is something we we just you know we're all touched by. This is from her uh, summer 2019 um, newsletter, which I'm sure you can get. Uh, she ma- I think she mails it out. I don't do that, of course. Mine I do my newsletter through my free free frequent alerts, um, and she's in Vermont. And Ginger told me to say to her, and I thought I'd say to all of you, that she has really admired Beatrice's work. And Beatrice is a person we met when we were still doing our own conferences. You know, Now I do them with Pam Popper. And we have one coming up in early November, by the way. Um, and she met her and liked her very much and has been following her development of inner fire 
and wants to send uh, Beatrice her, her best, which we do on air. She's very fond of her and feels that her work is very good, as I do. But as you all know, Ginger's endorsement carries a lot more weight around here than mine. Beatrice, welcome to the Dr. Peter Bregan Hour. How are you now since I just talked to you half an hour ago? Sure, I'm fine, Peter, and thank you very much for inviting me to share about Inner Fire, and and it's, well, we've been running, we're just cl- completing our fourth year now. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. You said, you, when we were talking, you started out with something that I thought was fascinating, which is that uh, you have been doing work, and tell people about who you are in terms of, when I'm done with this little bit, in terms of what your background is. That Everybody always wants to know that. But um, that you had been working in Great Britain. And yes. in Great Britain, I mean, Great, I'm sorry, Germany. You've been working no, in Germany. No, in Great England. Britain? In England, yeah. It was Great Britain. Okay, and and that you had a program that people there were much more open to alternatives. And you talked about that some, and I was very surprised. I didn't know that there was such a difference between Great Britain and America in the availability of programs. And then you also said other interesting things about America. But maybe start with that, and then we'll, we'll go on to how you got involved in this idea of inner fire. Sure, Peter, of course. Um, yes, well, I ended up, I lived in England for 25 years and returned in 98. So, and I do believe things have changed in terms of the availability and the pushing of these psychotropic medications since I've left the country. But I worked in holistic clinics in England and where we used homeopathy or anthroposophical medicine and the artistic therapies came very much into their own um, because, you know, I so much of what you touched on in your introduction, Peter, is I, I go along with totally in that we all have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And, you know, my relationship, I would even argue this term of mental health, I would refer to it as soul health. You know, we treat the human being as if we have isolated parts rather than as a whole. And in my experience of over 35 years, close to 40 years of work, um, you were with the Hauschka Artistic Therapy. You, of course, how our soul is, whether it's in a state of contraction or expansion, depending on what has happened in life, you know, for instance, if I was, um, if I saw something terrible and I, I got caught, you could say, in the in-breath, yeah, and I am afraid of breathing out because I might fall apart, yeah, or if I was sexually abused and couldn't speak about it, I mean, of course, any one of us would get as far out of our physical body as possible because the body is where the pain is. So either we're stuck too much in our center or we have no center. And each one of us is somewhere in that periphery, you know, in that, in that spectrum, really. And so we use the artistic therapies as ways of helping the soul to rebalance and to breathe again. And so we never used these psychotropic medications, but homeopathy was very effective and, you know, there, and these artistic therapies, as I say. And to be honest, when I returned, I was horrified, horrified to see how quickly people were put on these medications. Now, are you talking about returning to Great Britain or returning to the U.S.? I think Returning to the U.S., returning yeah. to the U.S. Well, let me, go, let me go back to Great Britain just for one second. Does that still exist there, This these kind of uh, clinics? Because sure. I have never heard about them. And I have British guests on quite frequently. Yeah. Yeah, there's, they're, they're scattered across the country. And they're actually recognized by the... Um, by NHS? The NHS. National Health Service. And you know why they're recognized? 
because they cost the NHS less money. <laughs> That's what draws the attention of the NHS to them, not, not, and because of the success rate. You and know, when was the last time you, uh, you actually uh, you know, visited one of these kind of clinics? Oh, I think the last time I was back in the country was maybe four or so years ago when I was oh, also so that's presenting. Recent. That's recent, by FIR, the span yeah. I'm looking at. If you, come up with there's, somebody, there's no... uh, if you come up with somebody to suggest that I could have on the show to talk about these clinics, I think that would be very interesting. So, you sure. know, give me an email if you can mm -hmm. think of somebody. Um, and you could be on with them if you feel like you you can contribute about them too. Great. So, um sure. Yeah. Give me a little email about that. Okay, I will. Uh, now, sure. I interrupted you when you said when you came back to the country and what year is that, you were just appalled at what you found here in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. And then I was, um, I could maybe, because there's so many stories related to this, Peter, but maybe if I come more closer to why Inner Fire was founded, because to be perfectly honest, 15 years ago, if you asked me if I would be doing something like this, I'd look at you as if, do you know something? I don't know. But, but I had been practicing for many years. And when you work as an artistic therapist, or at least when I work as an artist, and I've brought artistic therapy into prisons, into inner city situations, into clinics, and, and had my private practice as well. But you're, what you're looking for is you're trying to help the individual connect with, and I'm not a religious person, but I would say more spiritually inclined, with their divine creative self. Every one of us has a higher self within us, which in my experience is never damaged, is never hurt, but bears witness to what is happening in our life and on a on the soul level, is where the pain can happen. But if we can help the soul to breathe again, then the spirit can, again, re-engage in a more profound way. And um, so I ended up working at, was asked to work at a rehab um, in Vermont. And I would see these beautiful young people come in. Some of them, of course, were medicated, but there were some not. And I would watch them disappear as they became medicated. And, you know, and typically with the artistic therapy, you do see a progression. You see them evolving and growing. And then, but what I was struck at was then it seemed to plateau. And I was thinking, what's going on? What's happening? Something's blocking it. And I realized they could go so far, but being medicated, it was blocked. They could not go any further. And there was one time when, well, I had case managers coming to me saying, you know, nothing has happened for their particular client, but he's doing very different things. He's engaging in a totally new way. Nothing has happened except for engaging with you with the artistic therapy. And I think one of the things was, was I met them as human beings. They may be human beings and they're challenged or struggling with this or that issue, with anxiety or so, but I give no, really no credence to these labels, Peter. They may be, if anything, just an indication, but I'm much more interested in the human being. And then there was a time when... It was almost, I wondered, is this a setup? What's going on? But I had many individuals come to me, one after the other, it seemed, stand right in front of me and say, I hate being medicated. Isn't there a choice? And I knew from my work in Europe, of course there's a choice. This isn't necessary at all. And I would tell them of your work, Peter, of Robert Whitaker's work, of mindfreedom.org as, you know, all the other um, possibilities, you know, where they could research. And what happened was many of these people left, and within two years of their departure, I heard they had taken their life. 
it was awful. It was awful, you know, hearing one case, and I knew these people quite intimately because of working with them in this whole realm of the soul and the artistic therapies. And what was really awful, Peter, also was that the parents accepted this. My poor child, their life was difficult, and, and, I, and I say this with total respect for them, so I don't want this to be a mis- misunderstood, but they, these people do not need to take their lives. And I, at that time, felt, after the sixth person, to be honest, Peter, I felt, I'm out of this. I can't handle this. This is so outrageous. It's so unnecessary. And then another voice inside me said, no. You offer a choice. You take the best of your life experiences, you find your colleagues, and you simply offer a choice. And that's how inner fire arose. We're not telling anyone, Peter, to come off their psychotropic meds, but, you know, we work with people who hate being medicated and want to taper slowly and carefully. We have a wonderful psychiatrist who's courageous enough to to work with us, We will also work with people who you could say are referred to as first breaks, where they have not yet been put on medication, but they need the support that our program would give them. And we work with people who have come off, for instance, benzodiazepines or so, and they are still reeling with the effects of the withdrawal symptoms. So either of those three cases, we welcome people to come, but Peter, it's not a holiday camp. It is like hell warmed up. It's a good British expression, but to come off these meds, and it's a total artistic process. You know, we have the wisdom that's guiding what we do, how we're working with the individuals, but the idea that you can treat any two people the same day, same way, is ridiculous. You know, and so... Um, And what I loved, Peter, was you beginning with this whole speaking about love. And if it's all right, Peter, maybe I could share. We as guides, the staff at Inner Fire, as well as the seekers, and even our board of trustees begin, we begin our meetings with this beautiful um, saying, if I could just recite it for you. And it goes like this, and I think you'll connect with it. Love is for the world what the sun is for outer life. No soul could live if love departed from the world. It is the moral sun of the world. To spread love over the earth to the degree possible, to promote love, that alone is wisdom. And I love that combination of love and wisdom. There's nothing sentimental or fluffy about love, but it's an energy. And I would say, really, that's the main ingredient here at Inner Fire. We believe in these striving individuals. We know they can heal themselves. And that's also, I think, a very important aspect, Peter. I've had parents say to me, you saved my daughter's life for inner fire or so. And it's like, no, we did not. Your child or your spouse engaged in the program, and they have healed themselves. Because as far as I'm concerned, you can become addicted to crack, to yard sales, to therapists. Addiction <laughs> is addiction, right? And yes. Yes. And that's a very, very important thing that our theme song is stay engaged. As you're tapering, it can be awful, but we do encourage you to come down. And the whole program is about empowering. So everybody learns how to cook properly. And I'm glad you mentioned diet. We basically have a GAPS type diet, which is working with the gut health. No sugar, high protein, high fat, and of course, it's an all-organic. It's really a seven-star restaurant. Everyone learns to garden, and we do everything by hand. So not long ago, we finished our chicken coop, and we've built a hoop house, and 
We don't have rotavators, but we dig the beds ourselves, helping people <laughs> get out of their heads into their limbs. Beatrice, and folks, yeah. we're talking to Beatrice Birch from Inner Fire. I didn't get what you said about protein and fat. Would yeah. you just describe it's, what that diet is? Well, it's called the GAPS diet, which is gut and psychology syndrome diet. So there has been a connection, a growing awareness of what we eat can affect our gut health, the bacteria in our gut. So we also use a lot of kimchi and kefir and yogurt, um, fermented foods, which help um, heal the gut from the from all the really. So you're not no, you're not averse to. Um uh, dairy. Dairy. Well, no, we're not. But but did you? I just didn't quite hear. Dairy. Actually, hang hang on a sec. I didn't quite hear when you mentioned fat and protein. Whether you, were you saying high fat and high protein? Yes, and it's that's, the quality of the fat. That's so interesting because it is literally the opposite. This is very interesting. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's the opposite it's the of the vegetable of based. Instance, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting because I'm vegetarian, Peter, and I thought that we would be a vegetarian center in that way. But our chef and nutritionist, we, she you know, also cooks vegetarian, but it's the quality of the food. So, for instance, the cheese is all made from raw milk. The, we don't use a lot of milk itself, but we make yogurt and kimchi, and that's all made from raw milk. The food is all organic. And, you know, it's, it's, if you know of Sally Fallon or Nourishing Traditions, that's, and she has this, an excellent book which is well worth people looking into because it really speaks of a kind of a wisdom that's in the food and how much... Um, how, many, how much fad, you know, like marjoram instead of butter and so on. You know, our, our heart attack rate has not gone down with the um, increase of these marjorams and so on. No, but, they're processed foods and they're very high yeah. fat. Just, yeah. um, just to, to, to balance it with where I'm coming from and from my folks, and it's uh, I work with Pam Popper and one of her books is uh, Food Over Medicine. Food Over yeah. Medicine. And the diet is a uh, vegetable whole food. So you eat potatoes, not potato chips. And, yeah. uh, and it's low fat, so you avoid, you avoid even the better fats. But it's low fat, basically. And, um, and it is no dairy and no... Um, no cheeses or anything thing like that. Uh, and the studies that, that it draws on are studies indicating on, on a cultural basis. But we also now have a, a new study that just came out in JAMA, to my shock, that, uh, and that was about uh, heart health. And that in general, it's a very simple formula. The more vegetables you eat, yeah. the less fats you eat. The well, healthier also, your cardiovascular system, so it's yeah. a it is different from what you're doing. Uh -huh. But do you also eat a lot of vegetables because oh, that's totally. important. We grow we grow most of our vegetables ourselves, biodynamically and organically. Mm -hmm. And um, and the the beauty of the whole program, Peter, is that it's balanced. So and I believe very much in this term: out of form comes freedom. So when someone comes to Inner Fire, they know. Because they come for three days to see if we're a match, to see, and they mm -hmm. have a total immersion into the program, including the work in the broader community, in, you know, in the community of Inner Fire, either growing the vegetables or working in the forest. And what's beautiful, Peter, is I've experienced time and again people who hear voices do not hear voices when they're chopping wood or when they're engaged in a real will activity where they need to focus their attention. And that's very empowering. We also have, um, we also clean with biodegradable cleansers. 
So when you leave inner fire, you know how to clean properly. You know how to cook properly. You know how to garden. And then there's the forestry work. But the day begins at 6.45 in the morning when you arrive for breakfast at 7 and those people who are taking medications and tapering um, come for at for a quarter to so we can sit down to eat at 7. And then after breakfast we wash up and then we go for a walk about three quarters of a mile down the road in any weather unless it's really pouring, pouring with rain, and even then we'd probably take umbrellas. And then we come back and we have what we call a morning circle where we go around and we share how we are doing, and this includes the guides and the seekers, and what we're grateful for. And I admit there are occasionally times when someone can hardly find anything to be grateful for because the tapering process is so difficult. And then they, after that, and we, we then review the, the day and what, is, you know, what we're going to be doing, and everyone has their schedule. Some people will go into the kitchen and help provide, help prepare and cook, having harvested the vegetables, um, the meals, the breakfast, or sorry, the lunch and the supper. And so we eat like a king at breakfast, a prince at lunch, and a pauper in the evening. And then we all, so you're doing something, you're needed. You're doing something for the community. And then you come and have lunch together. And then people get a liver compress, which helps to strengthen, help the liver, which has been dealing with the toxins, to strengthen itself. And then after lunch, the What is a liver compress? A liver compress is made from using, because the liver likes bitter. So we make a compress using the yarrow, the bitter herb, and it is the compress is laid on the liver, and then the person is swaddled, and then a hot water bottle is put on, and they are they are in their bedrooms, and then after 15 minutes, that's removed, and this happens after lunch three times a week, when then they rest after lunch until two. And then they engage in the different therapies that are available, music therapy, artistic therapy, which I do, um, speech arts, a form of movement called eurythmy or spatial dynamics or yoga. And that happens three times a week. And then we have um, psychotherapy and, and other counseling, woods wandering and things on a Tuesday, Thursday and then in the evening, after supper at 6, we have, it's really, it's really beautiful, Peter, we have what we call sharing a question, which is a chance to, to share a question which you might have been carrying for years on a Monday night. And, and Tuesday, there's wood carving. People make spoons, chopsticks, and then spoons, and then a fork or a knife, which then they can eat off of if they want, and other things. Wednesday is an early evening. Thursday, we sing. And, of course, singing, you have to listen to each other and you claim your voice. And then Friday, we have appreciation, where you go around the circle and you say what you appreciate about each other and then yourself, which is typically the most difficult. So if you can, if you can envision in the, in the morning, it's the breathing out into the broader community where you are aware of each other's needs, and then in the afternoon, you focus on your own needs. You breathe in. And then, because not only the tapering is one part of the program, Peter, the other part is helping the person to strengthen themselves on a deeper soul, spiritual level. So the reason they may have approached a psychiatrist in the first place, because they've been medicated those issues have not gone away, and you need to. Be, and people need to, you know, even get to a point where they might even experience this trauma or tragedy, whatever happened. Maybe it's an opportunity for me to grow. Maybe it's an. Maybe somewhere it belongs to me. These challenges, so that I can grow beyond my box. You know, so. 
that's um it sounds wonderful and very interesting very exciting yeah um where do how can people get in touch with you we're talking again with beatrice birch from inner fire and yeah. how do people get in touch with you well our website is www.innerfire.us or you can reach me directly at um, Beatrice at innerfire.us and I would like to say Peter that we are a not-for-profit the only reason we've started this is not because it's for a business but really we're, I, we're only interested in healing and we have raised, recently we had a celebration opening the east wing of the Inner Fire home. And I've been able to raise from incredibly generous and people who really believe in the choice that we're offering. It's a, um, you know, raise, we raised over a million dollars and we still need uh, close to a million more to finish, to build our arts arts and drama barn, where it'd be wonderful for us as guides and seekers to um, off work in January, February in this part of the country where there's lots of cobalt. You're fading. Sky. You're fading on me. Am I? Yeah. Oh Come. dear. Yeah, um, you're still fading. Am I? That's strange. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, you're completely faded at this point. Oh, dear. Uh, by the way, folks, I have just Googled inner fire, just inner fire, and the third item down is the residential healing community. Um, wow, I don't know if you can hear this, but uh, I've got a large mower that has just arrived. Uh, Maybe uh, you can, can you hear me, Peter? Yes, now I can hear you for the first time. Oh, good. Well, let me just finish saying that we've raised over a million dollars, and we need about that much again in order to complete the west wing and the central part of the building. And um, at the moment, everything is being held in a beautiful old farmhouse. And we also want to create an arts and drama barn where we can work together as a community to offer a um, a production in January, February time. And I think you might be interested, if I could just explain, Peter, why we use the term guides and seekers. And um, perhaps some of your listeners have also a connection with working in prisons or so, which I did for many, many years in New York State. And one, I in, in a medium security, I painted with men, and one day a beautiful young man named Ian came up to me. I've been painting with him for over a year, and he said, I was trying to write to a friend on the outside about this art class, and it's so hard to describe what happened. Eventually, I wrote to my friend, it's an art class, but it's really a spiritual class. And then he looked at me and said, this is what I was looking for on the outside. Isn't it strange I had to come to prison to find it? And so, and I thought to myself, you're all seekers. You're looking for something more than this fast-paced, superficial, materialistic life. And so that's why I didn't want to call people clients or residents or um, patients in coming to Inner Fire. Yeah? And um, are you there, Peter? Oh, yes. I'm just yeah, listening. Yeah, like okay. I hope everyone and then, else is absolutely here. Yeah. And then just to share that, and we have the term guide rather than staff because just the way the banks of a river guide the current there are times where we, like the banks of a river, we have to hold tight to help the person in their withdrawal process. When mania might be, they may be on the edge of mania or so. And with the banks, you know, then, some, then we loosen the banks a little bit. But, you know, when the banks cave in and there isn't that guidance, which you were also talking about, Peter, earlier about the children needing 
guidance and support when they are young, boundaries. Um, and so that's how we see ourselves. And But the fact is we're all seekers and we're all guides. And, um, and so that's, I think, you know, and actually Inner Fire, we've, I had one person once say, declare at the dinner table once, I don't behave at Inner Fire any differently than I have at any other place. And every other place has kicked me out, but Inner Fire hasn't. <laughs> and I must say, we certainly had our challenging moments, but, but people <laughs> typically feel, they feel safe. Yeah. They feel safe and they're respected. And and the thing is, is that with these medications, as many people will know, we're disconnected from our clarity of thinking, our heartfelt feelings, and our intentional willing. And people cannot bear being disconnected from essentially what it is to be a human being where we have our feelings, you know, and we want to be to think clearly. That's our intention. And it's beautiful, Peter, to be able to watch as people do begin to taper. They come in and they say, I can think clearer. I feel myself coming back to myself. Parents are so grateful to have their offspring back. And um, Now, when you're saying uh, offspring, you're I think they're young adults, though, right? Or yeah, just older from adults. 18, no, well, we they're have people from 18 to 74 has been our eldest mm-hmm. person. Do you work wholly individually or do you involve families? We initially, well, actually, for the first three months, they have no contact with their family because we want to meet them as to who they are. And oftentimes, both the offspring or the spouse and the parents feel relieved at this and then after three months and I am you know we hide nothing I'm in touch with the parents regularly maybe their photographs or I can share processes that the individual has gone through and how they're doing and then in toward the end of the the last three months or six months really then I begin to work with a colleague and um, with the parents because there's a lot of healing that typically needs to happen. And so this idea of having three months for the person to begin to find him or herself as to who they are, and you can just imagine if they did such excellent work during the week and then on the weekend they spoke and fell into the trappings of family, and it doesn't matter how wonderful the family is, there are trappings, you know. I agree with you. It's very, very interesting. And in my own uh, practice, Beatrice, I actually love to work with families. I just think it's a, and I think that that there's nothing incompatible about our approaches other than they're different. Um, They come down to something very similar, which is I work with the families uh, as soon as I can, as soon as the client uh, wishes to, with the simple goal of improving loving communication. The same here, Peter, yeah. So it's not incompatible at all. You're kind of freeing them up from their families so they can have more loving communication with you. And the first thing we want people to do is to, for the parents, you know, I remind the seekers, you know, your mother was Jennifer because before she was your mother. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and That's and cool. for people to take an interest in each other and to listen to each other's stories, you know, rather than pointing the finger and and blaming, you know. Mm-hmm. And um but one thing I wanted to touch on, Peter, which you also touched on to begin with, is that you know childhood is so incredibly, incredibly important. And when we ask a good, healthy child to sit down behind a desk, behind a computer, for six hours a day, I used to get phone calls from parents in the South or so saying, there are no windows in the classrooms, they're only in the stairwell, and our children are not allowed to go out and and have recess. 
and our pr- schools are becoming prisons, and it's outrageous. And when our children do not want to sit yet for more hours through what can be a boring lesson, and when they react, we blame the children and say the chemistry in their brain is wrong or it's ADD, and it's no These are good, healthy children, and what our society is asking of them is outrageous. We're creating a psychotic society, Peter. And and look at our prison system where wonderful, wonderful people have been imprisoned, and somebody who had been imprisoned for 26 years and and proven innocent came and spent a year with us, and it was an incredible experience to oh, work with this been. person. Yeah. And what I would love for Inner Fire to be, to grow, to become, is a stepping stone for people re-entering society from prison. I'd love us to be able to work with veterans. We have to be available for all people, regardless of their financial situation, their race, or their religion. But at the moment... I'm very sorry to say that, you know, we, of course we get no insurance support or so, but we are private pay. and um, But we have what we call a support a seeker fund. And we've been able to support three people for two and a half years so far. But we need people to donate to our fund to help these young people to come who really want to be proactive in their healing process, you know, that they also should have a choice to be able to get off these medications, but do the good, the good work, you know, and we have, for instance, Peter, an anger is okay, but violence is unacceptable policy. We all have anger inside us. We all have sadness. We have the whole spectrum so when people typically begin to come off their psychotropic meds, they touch into this anger of having lost 15 years of their life, and now they are 30, and what am I meant to do? I don't know how to balance a checkbook. I don't know about relationships. So these people, Peter, are incredibly courageous. It's, it's remarkable how they strive to reclaim their lives and trust that they will find their way. And we have, when people leave Inner Fire, we're wanting to create what we call a creative living community so people can graduate. And typically it's a year program, particularly if they've been on their medications for a length of time so that we don't have to race the tapering process. And... um, then they would be able to go and have support transitioning back into society, but living in community. um, In Brattleboro, which is our nearest town, is a wonderfully dynamic town, very artistic, very creative, very innovative. And that's very important that they really can be in an environment which is exciting and interesting, you know. Do you, would you like to tell people what your daily rate is? Because, you know, it's, it's really not very high. <laughs> yeah, Peter, it's, it's 450 a day. And, it, yeah. and that includes, you know, everything, of, uh, three, three meals of organic food a day and all the therapies and, it's, and also the, the Inner Fire Home You know, I believe food feeds the body and beauty feeds the soul. And people who come here to Brookline near Brattleboro in Vermont, they are awed by the peacefulness, the beauty of it. And, um, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to have these 43 acres where people can really where nature has a chance to help in the healing process. So it's 450, including room and board? Yeah. Folks, (laughs) Folks, <laughs> there's nothing like that in the world. I mean, 450, I think, is the going rate for an hour or a half an hour with a psychiatrist in New York City. Yeah. So well, this is a wonderful deal, and people can determine their own length of visit. 
Yeah, but we really encourage them to give it the time, particularly, and of course the younger you are, the more impatient you are to get back into life, but but to really give it the time. Do the healing now so that you never have to go to a rehab again. And maybe, Peter, if I can just say, you know, I mentioned that inner fire was catalyzed by these six suicides. And I was so moved by, will we wake up? And I see yeah. these, sac- these suicides as sacrifices. These people, as far as I'm con- concerned, they have sacrificed their life. And I want to make sure they have not died in vain. And I must say, recently, or no, actually a couple of years ago, we got an email from South Africa saying, simply knowing inner fire exists gives us hope well I feel the same way I think that's uh, just uh, remarkable what you're doing folks again the uh, lawn the big lawn cutting machine is uh, passing by here Um, I wanted to uh, to ask you about your relationship to me when did you first hear about my work and did it have an influence on the on your development Yes, Peter, your work made me realize I'm not nuts, unless we both are, (laughs) and that we actually, it is possible to taper from the medications. It's not just a wishful feeling. It's hard work. And yeah, years ago, we met in Ithaca at a conference out there, and you just made me realize we can do this. And um, so, though we haven't had very much in common, I did come to one of your empathic therapy conferences, and I have your book on the psychiatric withdrawal. And um, it's, Well, let's it's stay possible. in better touch. And uh, at some point, uh, we'll have you back. Uh, you let me know what's a really good time. Maybe you're doing fundraising. or Oh, one other thing. I... Uh, my understanding is that you're going through a cycle now and you've been away and you're coming back and some new patients are coming in and you do have openings right now, I understand, and your maximum yes. is only about a dozen people. You're well, small. Well, when we have is, the we- yeah, ahead. we don't want to be big. When we have the West Wing built, then the most we will ever have is 12. At the moment, we're limited to eight. And so Folks, this people- is unbelievable. Four fifty a day for room and board, and uh, this small, intense help. And it sounds very good to me. I've never been there. I've never talked to anybody who has has been to your program. Uh, yeah, Beatrice, about- you sound wonderful. Uh, well, explore this about- for yourself if you're interested, folks. Yeah, please do, and. Um- Yeah, and I'm happy to discuss any questions people have about the program or the process. All you have to do is write inner fire into your Google and uh, you'll find it pretty quick. Thank you so much, Beatrice Birch, for being on. And folks, thanks for being there and thanks for communicating with me at breganlive at hotmail.com. And let me ask if let me ask again those of you who have a different political viewpoint than me or who are uh, progressives uh, rather than more toward libertarian conservative let me know if you'd like to hear me debate do not it won't be a debate have a sweet discussion with a progressive maybe one of my progressive friends so that you can hear a kind and gentle maybe even loving conversation on these things that are so dividing America let me know if that sounds interesting to you thank you for being with me